Hey there, folks. I'm making my latest video, and I'm, I'm kind of excited about this because I'm offering something that I have never offered before. Uh, many times when people ask about a vintage sewing machine from me, uh, quite a few customers will come to me and they, they want to sew heavy fabrics. And all of the vintage sewing machines that I restore can do that. These, these machines from back in the vintage era were capable of sewing a broad variety of things, everything from lightweight fabrics all the way up to upholstery. And so that in itself is not unusual, and I can usually find something for them. All of these people, uh, however, they, they are wanting to use a domestic scale sewing machine. And by domestic, I mean um, they want to use a machine that was made for the home as opposed to an industrial machine. Uh, an industrial machine has quite a few advantages, but there's also a lot of downsides to an industrial machine, and many people don't are not ready to bring one of those into their homes, and they're, maybe they're working out of a, a spare bedroom or something uh, in some of the projects they're working on. And so occasionally I get people who want to sew super heavy things, and I've been uh, working hard to come up with a solution to that and trying to find a machine that I thought would be a good candidate. And you're looking at this one right here. Now I've sold this model of machine before. And it is the Singer 66. Uh, this is the 66-16. There's also a 66-18 that I have on the on uh, on Craigslist. <clears throat> now a Singer 66 is not unusual. You'll see them quite frequently. They're not rare. Uh, you know they're not some people collect them and some people use them for, for everything from quilting, believe it or not to uh, just basic mending. This machine, and I've mentioned this in the other 66 Singer video, this machine is one of the, the machines that stayed in production the longest. The first 66 production was as a treadle model in around the year 1900. And this machine was made in the early 50s. Uh, and that model was made up until around 1960. So it was in production a very long time. It is a old trusted iron size. It's one of the toughest machines you'll find. And this machine will tolerate some of the thicker threads. They all have limits, as does this one. So what you're seeing is the first time I've created a machine that is what I consider to be an upgrade, if there ever was one, for a vintage machine. A few things that are different. Um, I removed the original motor and electricals from the machine, which is something I rarely do. In fact, I sew with the original Singer motor, which is called the BT motor. They're wonderful, very well made. I do all my sewing on them. They're awesome. And you can sew heavy materials with those. But I chose to, uh, to try this out. This machine is going to be, any of you can purchase it, but it's really focused toward those of you who are going to sew somewhat heavier leathers, really heavy tarps, and um, people who are going to be using the machine for things that they're going to be using some of the thicker threads. Uh, and I really wanted to have a machine for you folks that you could really sort of look to. And so I chose to do several things. One, the, the light system on the 66 is integrated into the original motor. So all of that was removed. I've installed a brand new motor, something I rarely need to do, but I chose to in this case. This motor has three times the amperage and power of the original. I have uh, an extra wide hand wheel, and when I say wide, I'm referring to the, the width of where the belt goes, and that's going to give me extra torque than what I'm used to getting. Um, the light was replaced with an LED gooseneck light, which is included here, and, uh, and I've set the machine up today to demonstrate for you just how tough it is. Uh, I've got extra thick leather. It's, this would still be considered garment, but more like leather jacket weight leather, and I'm going to have some... Um, uh, de uh, denim and multiple layers of denim in a minute because I'm going to switch out needles but I have a size 18 leather tip needle I'm being very specific with this video today and only going to do leather and denim for this reason uh, size 18 is a very large needle and it will hold or it will take the extra this is sort of an upholstery weight thread it's an extra strong thread it's UV resistant something you might use for outdoor upholstery work as well um, and this machine will, <clears throat> it will take up to a size 21 needle. That's very unusual for a domestic machine. So size 20 or 21 needle you could use if you, uh, if you so needed. So anyway, uh, this machine, unlike the earlier treadle versions, has back tacking. 
And for those of you who are Treadle lovers, I love them too. Um, but for many of the people who are getting machines from me, many of you are new to sewing and you like having, basically you go all the way up and you can back tack lock in your stitch. You come all the way down and that's your long stitch length. You can also do shorter stitch lengths. But today, particularly for leather, I'm going to do the long. So uh, let's see how this light will look in today. Yeah, so the LED is going to give a lot more light than the most most vintage sewing machines. They have cool lights, but the lights are fairly dim. So I always augment with LED anyway. So, but for today, I've got it in uh, some natural light here. So what I want you to do is see how I'm going to be sewing through what is considerably pretty pretty thick for for garment weight leather, and I want you to see the potential the machine has. Um, and I'm, uh, I've also made other improvements. I've replaced the entire power cord with a new power cord system, a new foot pedal. So there's a lot more new equipment on this machine than I typically need to do in a restoration. But I chose to do this because I, I think this machine is really purpose-built, purpose and I'm getting more people who seem to show an interest in having something like this. So... Um, uh, you'll notice I'm going to start with my needle down, and that's really helpful, even with a leather tip needle, because leather has a density that that fabric does not. And I've already run some stitches through here, and I'll show you that row in just a moment. Come down, and I'm going to turn around and make another row for you folks, and you'll get to see them in just a minute. I've used this sample before. But all of the stitching before was done in either sort of a gray or a, or a blue. So we'll be able to see these new stitches and the, plus the thread that I've got is, uh, is also pretty thick. I'm going to slow my needle down here. And of course I can sew more quickly if I want to. You never want to sew super fast when you're sewing thick material, whether it be leather or denim. Any kind of thick uh, fabric either because the machine has the power to sew thick um, material but needles need time to pierce and you can really break them and uh, when I change the needle for the denim in a little bit you'll see why so I'm going to come over now I'm going to add in I've got two more layers now this garment leather is slightly less thick than the other but that's going to be four layers of garment weight leather, two of which are extra thick. And let's see what the machine has to say about it. Do some back tacking. Some of you will prefer to, to, to do uh, hand back stitching in leather particularly. Some of you do that. I'm going to come back through those four layers again and let you see how powerful the machine is. It's really amazing that a, that a domestic sewing machine has the, the chops to do this, but it sure, it sure does. And you'll want to get her started, sometimes with your hand. And I'm going to make sure my sample fits under my foot. Always make sure that your foot is not binding the material. And that's a, this is one of the few times I've ever seen a domestic sewing machine be willing to do this. So let me show you guys, I should have good light for this. What you're looking at is these rows of stitches here, where my thumb is, these are all the stitches I just made with this machine. And again, let me show you the, the thickness of the original two layers of leather. And now I've added two more. Let's see if I think that will show up on it. There's the two extra layers. Now you see the two rows of stitches. Get my microphone here. You see the two rows of stitches as they came across. Right? And you can see where my leather got caught under the foot, and that was just my own fault, not really the machine's fault. And then you see it coming back across again. Now let's look at the other side because you always want to make sure that your tension is, is balanced on each side. And notice over here, this is, this is the reverse side. The, the stitches are amazing, right? And um, that is about the closest you will get without moving into a walking foot industrial machine. 
Um, now what I'm going to do next is um, I'm going to change out my leather tip needle to a jeans needle. And there's a reason I'll explain in a minute why I'm going to do that. So to save time, I have a limited time on these videos, I'm going to uh, do the switch and then we'll get started on the denim. Okay guys, I got my needle switched out. I'm going to start. I've got some really heavy denim. This is from a really high quality, not the cheap denim, but the, the heavier stuff. This was from a pair of Wrangler jeans. And um, I'm going to start, I normally start with two, I'm going to start with three because I'm going to be building up. The reason you want to use a jeans or a denim uh, specificated, specificated, specified needle uh, for this is not just with denim, but any heavy fabric. And the reason for that is going to be because uh, heavy fabrics put a lot of stress on the needle. And a jeans needle has um, an extra thick shaft and it is more resistant to breaking. Of course, we're going to do some back tacking here. And I'll come back. And that's three, three thick layers of denim. The machine goes right through it, but I'm going to add more. And we're going to see, see uh, how many layers it will tolerate. I've seen people do this before, but I really like to do the test myself on my own machine to verify. So I'm going to go ahead, let me show you the stitches first. Here are the stitches. Beautiful quality to those stitches, very consistent, and of course the little heart, there we go, a little tougher to see on the back side there. Um, but the, the, the uh, stitch tension is balanced. Now I'm going to add two more layers. So we'll go to five, okay. Still, ha I do still have room under the presser foot, and that's important to make sure that I'm going to have room there. And when you get to this level, you may want to, again, start with your needle down, which gives the machine a little bit of a jump start. And you'll notice I just did a U-turn. Uh, the older Singer straight stitchers are unique in that they are very forgiving to that type of sort of freehand driving. Uh, when you have wider feed dogs, you really can't do that easily, but... <clears throat> Singers are very useful for that purpose. So now that's five layers, guys, of, of heavy denim. And again, the machine did not whine. It didn't complain. It did it beautifully. And you'll see the, even on the back side there, the stitches are gorgeous. I'm going to add one more layer. That's going to be six layers of denim. I suspect we could even push the machine further. Um, but I like to, I like my videos to, to really let the machine shine, but not to to overstate anything. Sometimes I think people go a little crazy with their videos and and what they say a machine can do and I don't think that's that's a great idea. Anyway, I'm uh, going to again start with my needle down. You should always do that and again as I said before with the leather as well. I'm going to a little slower now. I've got six layers of heavy denim here. I think the machine uh, will go faster but again I don't want my needle, even a jeans needle, to break. Might want to light my pressure, press, press pressure on the bar a little bit there. And I can even back tack at this level of weight. So again, you know, I have probably, when I look at the space, I've probably got room for another couple of layers of denim. And I think based on the way the machine is sounding and the way it's behaving, I think it would take, uh, you know, as much as eight layers. Uh, but that, that folks, is why I, <laughs> you can see the sandwich I created. This is why I set this machine up. This is for those of you, I've had people, we have a lot of marine customers, people who live on the lake, they have boats that they want to repair men. Some of you want to do some umbrella for your outside upholstery. And then some of you want to do thicker leathers, right? Uh, you wouldn't do a saddle with this. Only only a walking foot industrial would do that. But this is really sort of the, the, the heaviest weight machine that I have created. I've been doing these restorations for seven years. So this is sort of my modified version of the Singer 66. Uh, I hope this video was helpful for you. And um, if you have any questions or you want to come and see the machine or test out your own materials on it as well, please come uh, or email me and set up a time and we will have... Uh, We'll have some time for you to test out the machine, or I can sure, sure demonstrate it for you and, and answer any questions, guys. Anyway, I hope this is helpful, and hope this machine will be useful to some of you. Thank you now.